The Episcopal Church in Navajo Land covers 26,000 square miles of desert and has hundreds of Episcopalians scattered over parts of three states. Many have to drive miles over dirt roads to find churches such as St. Luke's in the desert and lay pastors such as Inez Velarde who know what it's like to need the support of these churches scattered around the desert. There's a lot of families I talk to and where they need uh, support because I myself, I'm going through that a great support now. I just lost a son about probably about five months ago. So I know what grief is, so I find out myself. So that's why these people in um, my community here, they need it. Like so many, this church was built by hand, a rock at a time, carried in by Navajo men at night after they worked all day building the rails in the 1920s. Their faith is now the faith of younger generations. I'm a third generation uh, attendant from here. I've gone away to school, come back, and always end up back here. And now my daughter's 11. She enjoys coming here. It's a respect for those who built the church and those who sit within their walls. My great grandpa, he was a medicine man. So when I was growing up, I was kind of, I was raised in that way with my traditional. And my grandma Bessie was the one that took care of me. She taught me how to respect who you are and where you came from. I have no really, no problem with my Christian with that and my traditional. Respect is truly one of the foundations of the spirituality of the people of Navajo land. It's respect for the land a respect for the people, and a deep respect for centuries of culture. Just as the Hogan is a sacred dwelling where the lessons of life are taught, the Episcopal Church in Navajo Land has responded with a program called the Hogan Learning Circle. The Learning Circle is the shared walk along the sacred way, learning to relate the wisdom and traditions of the holy people in Jesus, both Diné and Christian in harmony and beauty. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Throughout this look at the Navajo Land Area Mission, you will see a sincere effort to honor the culture and to see that it is incorporated into the church. It's even in the building here at St. Michael's in Upper Fruitland, New Mexico. It's the shape of a Hogan. It's the shape of a Navajo um, uh, living in a, in a home where the door uh, opens east as you worship in Navajo culture. It's, it represents the painting and everything that's, that's in here that uh, seems like it, it's all the, the Navajo. One painting depicts a Hogan and sheep on the reservation. The other is of oil, God's gift to the otherwise resource-poor soil. All Episcopalians everywhere could learn much from observing the quiet and profound respect for the faith that we all share in Navajo land and elsewhere. Well, I see Good Shepherd, and I hope it's like this in heaven. And now I uh, clean in the morning in here. Then I sit here and think about all the things that need to be done and around here. And so Good Shepherd is a, an awesome thing to me. For decades, the Episcopal Church was growing throughout the Navajo Reservation, often outside the view of others. Father Baxter Liebler spent days driving over the sandy desert, visiting isolated communities. He was one of the first outsiders to ever be welcomed into a Hogan. 
St. Christopher's in Bluff, Utah offered vital health services and asked for anything in donations from coupons to trading stamps. For many, it was the first exposure to the Episcopal Church. It is the story behind many of the faithful. Kathy Plummer was one of those who came to St. Christopher's. The first time that I came to, to St. Christopher's was the, uh, when I was at the age of six or something like that to, to uh, get myself into school here at the church school. Father Liebler became a legend. He just kind of blend in as a, as the Navajo people. He was just among them and he uh, participated in their uh, ritual ceremonies. You know, he went to their houses, Hogan's, and then from there he learned to speak the language and, and um, people you know, more, accept him more when he did learn how to speak fluently. And then he used that in, in his uh, sermon. Missionary priests such as Father Liebler discovered it was imperative to learn the beauty of Navajo spirituality. Another missionary priest, the Reverend Jack Fowler, knew that firsthand from those early days. I would go uh, to the Hogan, the medicine man might be there doing a sand painting or uh, doing a ceremony of some sort for the healing of the sick and I, I um, practiced uh, a form of, of medicine. I had a medicine bag, took it with me and uh, together we would work uh, for the healing of the sick. He knew what I had and what it might do for them. And I knew what he had and what it might do for them. So we did it in combination. And I've always respected the uh, tradition. Navajos such as Kathy Plummer would grow to love the church and create new ministries. I met my husband, Stephen Plummer, who became the Bishop of Navajo Land. The Episcopal Church grew to be more than just a place to worship. To the Navajo people, it was very important because it was, it meant life, you know, to them, their well-being and their spiritual uplifting. The ordination of the late Bishop Stephen Plummer was a milestone in church history. The ordination of Navajos created a new era with new goals. Churches chose parishioners who became deacons and other leaders, always dedicated to the sacred past and dedicated to the joy of the church. Cornelia Eaton remembers her father, Deacon Yazzie Mason, who lovingly conducted services at St. Michael's. Everything had to be exact um, uh, as far as the, the way the wine was set up, the way the bread was set. This is how you have to set each uh, sacrament. And those were the most, um, I think that was his life. I saw my dad as a medicine man, but as a medicine man in the Episcopal Church with the bread and the wine. So I thought in that way he had very holy hands. The churches are much more than buildings because the people were always more than parishioners. It just brings back a lot of good, good memories here for me. Um, standing here before the altar, I, as when I was setting up here earlier, I just kind of rubbed my hands across the altar and I just kind of felt a presence of, of, of everybody that I've known here and basically mainly relatives because um, we're all connected and um, by clan. The clan relationship holds the Navajo people together with strong bonds into about 80 clans. Since one is born into his or her mother's clan, those relationships of peace and harmony must be not only observed but nurtured by the church. It is people connected by clan and by a common belief. In this case, they are gathered around the heat of a wood-burning stove in the small St. Mark's Church in Coal Mine, Arizona, early on a cold Sunday. In the unity of the Holy Spirit. The service is early in the morning. They must be finished by nine o'clock as the now frozen roads to the church will thaw out then 
and be impassable. It's simply that important to gather around the stove and hear the gospel and share with each other. The young St. Mark's warden, G.J. Gordy, is finding more and more people to join that gathering. Be with each of us this day and always. Amen. Well, when I became familiar with children and we started talking about church and everything, they, they have like a lot of stories behind them too. And they just, they don't understand things much and we grow together by our understandings. Two hours later, another group of people are gathered and connected by a common culture in the pews of the spectacular Good Shepherd Church in Fort Defiance near the Arizona-New Mexico border. So as John was baptizing, Jesus is recognizing his own call. Past the magnificent silver and turquoise cross and past the handmade beauty of the altar are more the dedicated members of the Episcopal Church of Navajo Land. While Bishop David Bailey is today's presider and preacher, God, these are your people. This child belongs to you. It is the laity that serves many of the ministries of the area mission. The importance of the uh, church to the people now is really alive. It's a, it's a thing that they want and they're part of it. Volunteers are very, very important here because like right now we don't have a full-time priest and the volunteers here are a great help and we try to get as many as we can. Lay pastors such as Lily Henderson in Montezuma Creek, Utah quietly do the Lord's work throughout the reservation. Again, it's to preserve their culture, which is remarkably compatible with Christianity. Here they decorate paper sheep. Sheep are both symbolic in the church and in the teachings of the Navajo. I try to teach the children from the gospel, the gospel lessons, and then um, also correlated with the, the, the traditional uh, Navajo teaching together. It goes hand in hand. And, um, and after the lesson, we would go into crafts. It is also in these lay ministries that the modern reality of challenges on the reservation hit home. There's a lot of things that they go through. Right now, there's um, children that are adopted to um, different families and um, children that are going through um, drugs or um, uh, alcohol, substance abuse, and uh, parents being unemployed. And so I want to make a difference in their lives to make this a safe place for them to come after school. The reality of this isolated reservation is there is widespread economic poverty and the conditions that come with poverty and unemployment. Most in church will tell you that they or their families have been touched by alcoholism and drug abuse. Those in church have seen suicide and the breakdown of families, and they will tell you it makes them better lay pastors in gathering others to the loving arms of the Episcopal Church. I think it's better to be, to be the person that goes through something like that, like uh, alcohol, alcoholness. You have to see it and uh, be with it, and uh, then the drugs, and then there's uh, other problems with the family, separation, divorce, and there's always people losing a special person in, in, their, in their life, in which I go over there and I have that in my life, so I know what to say to them. Yes, it's gathering others, not just to the church, but gathering others to know they are not alone. It's vital in the culture to gather. I just gave them like my story. I told them how the church has helped me and, and that it's different for everybody, but if you just 
open your hearts and your mind, it'll help you a lot and make you grow stronger and it'll bring you a lot closer to God. It was the ministry of people such as the late Reverend Margaret Hardy of Good Shepherd. Now her daughter reaches out to those isolated communities, to those who see the realities of life. She uses the complex of buildings at Good Shepherd where she grew up to conduct support groups. Maybe one little word would help that one per person or individual to make a difference in their life and in their families and as a person and as a role model and as a father, a mother, a grandparent, an uncle, a son. So those, those things are very, um, are very um, important to me in my life because that's what my mother pursued in her lifetime. People out here when they need something or when they need help or counselor or when they, they want to talk to people when they're, and they're struggling with their own families. And here I am with my, with, with my supporting group that, and they come and talk to me about it. If, if they need help and I talk to them, I sit down with them and we talk about the process they're going through. And uh, the only that, only that I pray with them. Not just on Sunday, but in homes scattered around the desert, there is a gathering of hearts. The food bank is, to me, personally, I think it's very, it's very important because a lot of um, the elderly Navajos and the younger uh, generation are on fixed income, and like they get their food stamp or their, their checks in the first of the month, and then towards the end of the month, they run out of food and that's when they come in to pick up a few, maybe we give them food enough to at least compare, to prepare two or three meals. The Episcopal Church is alive. It is alive with those who worship together and preserve the culture, and those who gather to preserve the next generation. I feel like they made my day, and I feel, I, I feel like I want to go back and do it all over again the next day. Bishop David Bailey says the lay pastors are a powerful and positive force in the church. Lay pastors are extremely important because they're the ones that have the direct contact with, with the constituency, with the congregation, with the connection that the uh, lay pastors have in being able to speak Navajo, with knowing the traditions, with understanding the culture. It's a wonderful bridge uh, for the clergy in being able to engage and to respond to the needs that are there. The Diné, the Navajo people, are the key to the strength of the present and the hope of the future. The language, the culture, the understanding of the reality of challenge, and the centuries of gathering as Navajos means the leadership must cultivate the greatest resource in the church the Diné to serve in all areas of the leadership, including the consuls, and to serve at the altar. Currently, there is only one Navajo priest, the Reverend Brazella Jim at All Saints of Farmington. My intent in coming here is to give guidance and direction uh, as a partner with the Navajo in identifying uh, leadership, both lay and ordained. Uh, and with the great hope that out of that ordained leadership that we can raise up a Navajo bishop. My goal is a goal that Bishop Stephen Plummer had many years ago, is that there would be Navajo representation in the way of priests at every, at every altar. The devoted drive hours to meet in council with Canon Bailey. They come from three states. They come with enthusiasm and in prayer. They bring their years of experience and their love of their neighbors and know that to succeed, they must gather as one. The Navajo people are, uh, you know, uh, starting to understand that uh, we do need to, to go forward and work together and uh, plan together and uh, look towards uh, a, a new uh, 
our own Navajo bishop again. The church is alive and growth will continue to come from the gathering of new generations of Navajo people and with continued respect. Part of our youth, our young people have really haven't been so connected to the traditional ways or culture and the ceremonies. But um, I know that uh, through the Episcopal Church, if, if the, the Episcopal Church of Navajo land, um, the more we continue to bring in our culture and our tradition back to the people, then eventually our young people are going to pick that up. I hope that in the future, our young people, especially, and uh, little ones can grow up in that strength and be strong and courage to live in that harmony way with their traditional and their Christian life.